Hello and welcome to another presentation of Indies Education. Now in this presentation I'm going to discuss about the security conference I attended last month. Uh, it was held in United Kingdom in Birmingham at NEC National Exhibition Center. Now um, I attended a wide variety of conferences. Uh, it is mainly to get the industry experience, also get uh, CPG uh, which will help me to become a charter engineer. I can record my CPG, then I submit it uh, with my charter engineer application um, at uh, IET. Now let's talk about the security conference. Uh, first of all, I've been there, as I already discussed. Uh, it was uh, for the CPG, also just to get some industry insights. Uh, the current technology uh, used in surveillance as well as uh, for monitoring um, different situations and now uh, what is uh, what I've got uh, from this conference um, I spoke with uh, different uh, companies um, I introduced myself um, that uh, with my background um, I'd like to know uh, about different uh, technologies uh, and I also discussed with them my own startup and now um, I spoke with now let's see my interview with the uh, um, representative of Genesis.ism. Genesis is a very uh, big uh, market player at uh, security industry. Um, they got uh, uh, all the big clients and now even um, the representative was uh, discussing uh, their product with me. Now listen some of the interview. Yes. Uh, so it takes multiple manufacturers, multiple different systems, and it puts them all together in a unified front end, yeah. so it allows them to communicate with each other. So if you had a, one of the Typo CCTV systems, yes. but you also had, say, a Pelco system, they're not going to work together. But right. using Genesis, you can actually work together and get it all brought in as a single solution. So this is like a multi-manufacturer integration system? Yeah. So yeah, effectively, and then we can actually drive the actions of one based on another. So if someone smacked a fence, the CCTV would be able to snap to it. So it identifies different security threats? Not, not as much. It's, uh, it's for if one of the subsystems yes. identifies there's a threat, then it tells the other systems how to deal with it. So, oh. for example, if a fence says that it has a threat, the, it will tell the CCTV to start showing the operators that CCTV for that threat so that they're aware of what's going on. Okay, okay, so it's like an archive communication system. It, it, yeah. it, it feeds the data, then um, the next system to decide what to do with it. Yeah. Okay, okay, excellent. So, uh, what kind of product in terms of like um, customer oriented? What do you sell? So we, we sell the actual hardware, uh, the software itself, this Genesis. Right. So this is what we sell to people. So this is your software. Yep. And um, it, has got, it has got the user interface. Yep. And it can be integrated with multiple manufacturer. Yep. Okay, okay, yep. right, right. And uh, how, how are the prices, like, just taking some idea? It's, it's one of those sort of how long's a piece of string. For, you know, one PC running one bit of Genesis for, you know, one camera and one access control. Yes. It's a few grand. But if you've got like hundreds of PCs, hundreds of sites with loads of different systems, it can obviously go way up. So, um, for the small company, uh, how much do you say? For the small company, like for the beginner level uh, product? Uh, again, it, it depends because kind of every site's a bit different. Yep. So, you know, we, we have some sites where it's like seven, eight grand because it's tiny, like, you know, five doors, some CCTV, some fire and a fence. But then we've got some sites like some of the prisons that we do where it goes up into, you know, tens if not hundreds of thousands because they're so big and they have so much to manage across so many different parts of the system. So okay. it really flexes about. So for the beginner level company, it will start from five or seven grand. It can, again, it is that thing of like, uh, it depends on how big of a building how, how big or how big of a site. Yes, yes. Not, not as much how big the company is. So are you a British company? Yep, British company. Okay. You based in? 
Uh, we're based down in Sussex, Sussex. so just below London. Okay. okay. Excellent, Mike. I'm just exploring all this. Um, I'm an electromechanical engineer. Yeah. I work as a field engineer in healthcare industry, but um, I have my mission and vision to start things on my own. So yeah, it's no, really beneficial to explore different things and take ideas. No, definitely. Okay. Go on. Good to talk to you, Tom. Thank you Thank very you much. Too, uh, Thank you. If you want more information, if you contact Excellent. this chap here, Excellent, Tom. You. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you. So, what we have, this is the um, Avitec uh, brand of products. So, we're showing our CPNI detectors here. So, mm. these are all approved for use on government sites, but they've also got a police approval. Okay. So, we've got 15 meter anti mask passive infrared here, um, which is a Fresnel lens. So, that detects anybody trying to come up. Mask detector? Yeah, that's it. Yes. yes. Um, We've got these are Avitech uh, products, so these are mirror optics. Uh, then we've got glass break that detects the frequencies when glass yes. is broken, also the pressure wave and glass in the ground. So, yeah, that cuts false activations. Uh, this is using uh, banks, building societies. So, this is used on safe doors. And then we've got um, door contacts. Again, these will approved you know, for use of high risk government sites. So they, they are magnetic? They are, yeah, yeah. But these have got three sets of contacts. So if somebody tries to get an external magnet to try and hold that clear, it will, it will activate and it will give you a tamper condition. So well, what is the limit of the force it can it can protect itself? Uh, what, the distance between them? No, no, no. And how much force, like um, how many how, how many kiloton or things like force it can Oh no, the, the, these aren't magnetic blocks, these are magnetic door contacts. Yes. So this is the door opening. Yeah, I know, but yeah. there's a limit of the force it can it can um, prevent. After that it just break and let, let things go. Yeah, well the, the distance is between nine to sixty four millimeters and it has to be just the right sort of thing. Um, and distance uh, apart. This is like of the civil limit. Yeah. So th this is the advisor advance panel. So this is 32, 128, and 512 cycles. Um, it's got two data buses on this panel that just goes out to all the devices. Uh, so we've got keypads, readers. So each of these um, is, is a door, yep. as well as being an intruder system yes. for arming and disarming. So you'll see you've got the request to exit there. That unlocks the door. The same on this one. So you can have 16 doors on the panel. Yes. This can also have uh, tags. So I've got a bench there. I'll on that one. Okay. That unlocks the door. Yep. Um, but that's giving you very cost effective access control. But then you can bring in the door controller. So this is if you want more of um, advanced options such as anti pass back, door interlocking, you can have one of these and that will give you four doors. But you can have 12 of those giving you 48 doors. Okay. So these are intelligent doors in addition to your 16 standard doors. So the same kind of thing might go through. If you can use pink codes, um, you'll see that's the door unlock output. You've also got an RTE for each of them. And you can have, um, oh, sorry, the one, that one unlocks the door. But you can have 32 readers on the system. Yes. So you can have like, multiple readers per door. Yep. So yeah, basically 48 doors. Uh, and 16 on the panel. Excellent. So, in terms of integration, yeah. how, mu how much can it be integrated with third party system? Like um, this guy, we are offering the whole security umbrella. Like, So, can it be integrated with some third party system? Is we, there... We've got our own integration software, which is here. Yeah. yeah. So, you'll see that lot I just activated. Uh, let me just go to the top level. Uh, so, that was the door was forced, so I've drilled down to it. I'm just going to reset that. Okay. So yeah, if I go back to the top map there, so this is where if I want to uh, drill down, you might have multiple oh, sets yeah, of yeah, regions. Yeah. So Birmingham and EC cut there, that's the particular, that's this panel. Right. So you can click that, and now you're at the this level. So all of these are your devices, they're all live, so if for instance I trip uh, that door contact, so that's that one. Oh, okay. Does it also come yeah. with fire safety as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this is by you know the internet. Oh, yeah. Um, but I can also do things. So these are the individual doors there. These are those four doors on that door controller. Uh, these, uh, the, the two doors here. Yeah. But I've also got cameras on there, so I can go to that camera and say show. There's that camera. 
Well, I'm going to the PTZ show. Excellent. I'm control the PTZ for now, so I can kind of zoom in. But yeah, it's all controllable from the integration software. Yep. And this integrates intrusion access fire and video. Yes. So similarly, these doors, I can say open the door, and you hear the door unlock wow. over there. So that's the preset associated with, with, with the door. Um, similarly, if I was to page one of these, That's the door open there. Yep. And that is the camera looking at that door. Yes. Um, so yeah, you've got the kind of the integration. You can also arm and disarm. So I can either go to the area and say arm, or I can make a button so I can say set and arm the panel. Wow. So this could be remotely, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I understand that your systems are modular. You can add things up. You yeah, can get all of can. them, or you can get part of them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this, this is one panel. That you might have, if you've got an estate of say, yeah. 500 panels, these you would have the same. For yeah, and, and the CPU is the, this is the CPU for the yeah, yeah, for the control that's unit. The main, that's the main panel. Yeah. But main main panel for yeah. controlling this is the control unit, but the computer system is separate. Uh, yeah, all that happens the way this connects to here is just by a, um, a, uh, an internet connection. Yeah, so this, this could be anywhere really. But is there any CPU inside the, inside this, or this is the CPU? Uh, this is the CPU here. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. So, yeah, this, this is the alarm panel here. So we've got eight plus number eight detection zones. These will be outputs to go to the alarm receiving centre, um, and then you've got a data bus that goes to all of these individual devices. Yep. But they're all just connected by our RS four eight five to the panel. So that is one complete system, which could be as many as five hundred and twelve zones, and then that has just got one connection to this panel. So, um, this is a modular system, and obviously it all begins with this central processing unit. So, how, how, how much a smaller unit with this would cost? Oh, well, we're not kind of at the, like, the low end zone panel. You know, we're, we're kind of the mid range. Yes. So, yeah, the bigger the system, you know, the more cost effective it is. I'm but just we'll trying to get some idea. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much it would cost a modular, a smaller system? Well, it kind of depends what's on the system, really. You know, there's so many variables. But with the um, CPU, with the CPU in a beginner beginner level, uh, yeah. for your entry level customer, what would you uh, give to, like a rough quotation? Probably a, a really small system with the other. Uh, 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 it depends exactly what's on it, but maybe a couple of hundred pounds. Or something like that. Oh, okay. So right. it's not really low end, but it's not really high end. It's not. It's mid range. Yeah. It's yeah. mid range. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So, but I mean, the, the sort of people we're competing with are people like Honeywell, you know, the um, the Galaxy or the Dimension panels. Galaxy. Yeah, so they, these are kind of the people we're competing with, really. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you Excellent. know, we're, we're not really at the very low end, we're just like an eight zone. Panel. Yeah, and that's fine, yeah. you have we've got this, all this good um, central processing you need. Yeah, but oh. this is where you can choose what you want to fit in, you see. So I can put a relay board in, and I can say when a particular alarm goes off, it trips a relay, yes. or I can control these remotely. Yep, and we have an app as well for the end user. Oh, excellent. Good to talk to you, Jan. Yeah, and uh, need to uh, arrange for any information to be sent to you. Hello, good morning. I'm from Ingest Tech. Uh, I'm exploring all the technologies you have here. So I'm talking to different people, try to get some ideas. So um, can you explain a bit about your startup? Yeah. So um, the systems we have to provide complete accountability for all keys. So uh, if you've got a business and you want to keep track of who's got keys, whether keys are returned, uh, our systems will give you the full account for you. Okay, okay. Can I have a look at your brochure? Sure. Cheers. Availability team? Yes. So uh, if management don't want you to have certain keys and we're not showing this list, once you select a key, the system will open up. Wow, excellent. Excellent. This key now <laughs> is completely locked with the user that has it up. Okay. And the system will track uh, when the key has been returned. Yes. We can also set up uh, alarms on the system so if a key isn't returned in a certain period of time, oh, okay. then an alarm will be raised. It's good for accountability. Yes. Whoever check it, yes. Exactly. Yes. So um, I work as an electromechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, I also work in healthcare industry as a field engineer. Uh, so I'm exploring all the systems, uh, trying to get some ideas, because um, you can start something once you have enough ideas. 
So, uh, how much uh, is the will it be okay if you can explain how much will it, would, it, would it cost, like an uh, entry level system? Um, so, if we had, so this is a free modular system, so we can have six of these key banks in a system, uh, like we have over here. Um, and the price for a full 96 key system would be around 8 grand. 8 grand? 8 grand. 8 or 9 grand. So, a uh, 96 key system would be 8 to 9 thousand pounds? Yes. Okay, okay. the different cameras and they're all doing some different functionality so this one here number one is that yeah, it's, it's okay so the line down the middle is called a trip wire okay so if anyone walks either way across that trip wire they'll be trapped by that camera for 30 seconds okay yes. got auto tracking on it number two and number three are a thermal camera. Thermal cameras, okay. Yeah, so that's the thermal image, that's the standard image on the same camera. Yep. Number four. So what is the purpose of this thermal camera? Is it related to like a health and safety, COVID-19 aspect? For, the, for this one, yeah. it's nice. It, it doesn't give any temperatures or anything like that. But it detects... Um, it, it just detects heat sources. So what is so the use of, what is the immediate use of this? It's normally used for like looking at combustible materials. So if you've got like a recycling plant, and you were checking for any source of fire or anything like that. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, so yeah. So it picks up heat sources. So, so basic, basically it's a heat detection. It's yeah. like a fire yeah. alarm, fire alarm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, this one here is the TIOP camera, which stands for three in one. So it's got active deterrent. Yes. Um, it's got smart motion detection. So basically, if you look at the, the camera, it's the second one here. Second one, yes. Yeah, so when it's triggered, you'll get a red and a blue flashing light. Yes. And you'll get an audible warning. So if anybody walks across and, and activates the motion, it just shouts at them and takes okay. them yeah. um, This one is actually picking up PPE, so high-vis jackets, yes. yeah. Yep. Um, hard hats, anything like that, and that will come over here. So it's going moving way too fast, but... You can see there, okay, so there's no, no helmet, it's too fast to check out. Yes. The next one is privacy protection, so it's blanking out everybody's faces. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's when you're on playback or if you're trying to get the, the video off the back of it, then you can remove that privacy protection. Yes. But for everybody else, you can't see their faces. And then the last two, so all of the first seven uh, six it's cameras sure. are IP cameras. The last two are just analog. Okay. So they're connected with a coax cable. This one's um, just uh, just just a standard analog camera. Right. And that one over there is 4K video. Oh, okay. HD, yes. Um, on an analog camera. And the screen as well is provided by them, which is a, a touch screen unit. So it can be used as a whiteboard. Yep. You can write on yep. it. Yep. Yep. All that sort of stuff. Yep. Well, I've also got facial recognition as well. Um, yeah. So, uh, can it be uh, can it be integrated like a, like an attendance system? With an attendance system. Yeah. Um, you can have. People counting. People so counting, yes. Count people in, yes. count people out. Yep. Um, with regards to attendance, I'm not 100% sure. So, uh, if you don't mind, how much would like uh, your mid range or entry level system would cost with all the CPU? Uh, and is the screen part of it? Uh, no. So, I mean, the screen is, is quite expensive um, because it's interactive. Yes. Realistically, for depends on which camera it is that you, that you choose, but the analog ones are probably about 50, 50 pounds. As you move forward, you've got about 120 for the one, the second one in, a bit higher for the third, a bit higher for the How fourth. much is the thermal camera? The what? Thermal camera, this, this one. The thermal camera. Oh, 
500. Okay. And how much the CPU whole, whole integration would cost? So, for instance, like um, five camera, one CPU. We wouldn't necessarily. So we, because of the functionality that we're showing, yes, we've had to go with higher spec MVRs. Yep. You wouldn't necessarily need that, but for example, that this MVR here is 800 pounds. So the CPU is 800 pounds. Yeah, that's 800. And uh, the monitor can be used with other monitors. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We've just gone for this because it's such screen and we can display that as well. So how, how, much, how much did you say about the, this thermal camera? It's the thermal camera, yeah. for 50, 500 pounds. Okay, so realistically, for five camera system, we can look for around two, two to three grand? Yeah. yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, All right, Sam, so. good to talk to you. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. So this is a behavioral detection system. Uh, can you explain? It's, it's not a tech system, it's people. Okay. So the, the, the whole thing is to teach people how to monitor and understand behavior and see who's above and below the baseline and what they do with that. Okay. So what is the immediate use of it? Immediate field of use? Uh, it could be in the retail environment, uh, airport security. So when you say retail environment, it's like... Uh, well, talk about the airport security. So, if there is a potential threat is detected, then it, does it detect any threat? It, well, it's not a system, it's people. People, okay. So it's people. Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely, that's the idea, is, is that, that, that people understand the environment. Yeah. So, they, they can monitor behaviors, what we would call above and below the normal baseline of the environment. Yes, okay. Which, which is wholly different from profiling. Okay. So, um, what is we, this? So, we teach people. Oh, you teach people. Oh, excellent, excellent. Can I take one of the brochure? Yeah, sure. Thank you very now, much. This Thank video you. can be used as a reference for anyone, um, any newbie like me, uh, want to get in in security industry with their um, startup skills, um, the cost involved, um, the planning involved, and who should you talk to. Uh, so this video uh, could be helpful for them. Now, um, hopefully you have liked this, um, though the quality, uh, the sound quality is not really great and uh, I tried my best. I'm not really skilled at taking interviews uh, from people, but um, hopefully you enjoyed it and let me know your um, comment and let me know your review. Um, I will see you at next time. Thank you.